Welcome to our 2022 Avenger 27 DBS. Kind of right in the back corner here, you get your power cord inlet. So as you pop that open, you're gonna find a little notch over in the top corner there. It's gonna line up with that notch here. Press those in together and give it a little eighth turn and that'll lock it down. Then you get the threaded collar there to properly lock it into place. Following the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites will have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. In the end of your bumper, if you just reach in, pull that cap out of there, you'll find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears and the adapter here. It's helping you hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things up a bit fresher. Cap just presses into place. In this corner, as well as each corner of the trailer, you're gonna find your stabilizer jacks. All they do is they run down, contact the ground, just give it another turn or so to firm it up, and that'll get rid of any sort of bounce or slay that you see got in the unit right now. Just keep things firm while you're out camping. Another step forward and you get your sewer inlet or your outlet. So you're gonna kind of press on that cap. You can give it a turn, pop it on out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had. It'll attach the same way where you're just turning it in until it kind of clicks into place. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. Black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. So that's, of course, going to be your dirtiest water. So we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically, filling in water, we'll dump that last just to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Another step forward, and get the other end of your sewer system. So this guy here, I believe, is dedicated to your, uh, your kitchen. That guy there is going to be your kit bathroom sink and shower. Right beside it here, you got low point drains. All you do is just open those up. It allows the water system to drain itself out. So if you're leaving the unit for a while and you, don't, and you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can drain it out before you leave. Towards the front of the trailer here, you can get your water inlets. So up top, here's your fresh water inlet. Pop that cap out, your water hose will stick into there. Turn on the water and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent right there. Down underneath it is a black tank flush. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the, your probes. So what you'll do is just take your water hose and plug it into there, open up that black valve and turn on the water. And that'll just flush out that tank for you, getting rid of any sort of debris that could be causing your issue. Down underneath it is your fresh water tank drain. So you just open that up, allows the water tank to drain itself out. There's also a little vent back there. So you will see some spot, some water spitting out of there as you come up towards full. Storage compartments here, as you open that up, you get the little finger on the left side there, holds it open for you. On the right side, you get your water hose here. Inside of that water hose, you'll find your park adapter. You can see here, the customer's also opted to go with the weight distribution hitch. So we just got that stored in here for them, as well as the Bluetooth brake controller there. Around in front of the unit, you get this black box here. Inside of that black box is your battery. So as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pin to tow vehicle, that battery's charging for you. These knobs here, if you loosen them off and push them back, you can open it up and you get access to your propane tanks. Pull this right off. I'm gonna change over in front here so you can see it's currently red. It's just letting us know we've got no propane in the system. Arrow's pointing over here, so we'll open up this tank. It'll go green. Now I got propane there. If it were to go red, well, you got that tank open. It's just letting you know that tank is now empty. At that point, just flip the arrow over to the other side, and run off of that tank while you get the other one filled. In front's your power tongue jack. On the left here, you get your, your light switch. On the right, up is down, down is up. Other end of your storage compartment here. Up on the wall back here, you do have a little light just on its own center push button there. Little T-latch here. Would sit into there to hold the door open for you. You also get a little bottle opener there. Hot water tank here. See that keyway there? You just line that up and it pops on open. All your controls for turning this guy on are just inside the unit. Before turning it on though, we want to hit this relief valve right there and you should get some water out. If you're not getting any water out, there's a chance that it's empty. So at that point, you just want to make sure your water's turned on with everything opened up so that this guy can fill up before you turn it on, just so you're not running the risk of burning out your elements. Once you're done, just locking it back down with the keyway. Here are two exterior speakers here, right in between them is a GFI protected outlet. Kind of underneath them, you've got your furnace here. So that's the exhaust to your furnace. So if you are running it, you just want to make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Straight up from there, you'll find your stove vent. So you just pop that guy open and then your fan inside will then evacuate any sort of fumes. Right. Once you're going traveling, you're just pressing it back into place until it clicks and that'll prevent any dust from kicking up in there. Towards the back, you'll get your exterior kitchen. It just opens on up You get your little finger on the right side here to hold it. 120 volt fridge so as long as you're plugged in this guy's going for you get the sink here with hot and cold water power outlet right in the back there is also a light up here as well just on its own center push button for your stove you can pop that slider out and then you can bring it out all the way once you have it out all the way just bring that back in i'll just kind of lock it open for you then you can open it up swing these wings out 
We grab our hose here. It's that quick connect collar. You just pull that back and you can undo it. Underneath there's a little pigtail that we'll attach to. And then down at the unit here, you get our quick connect, pull that dust cap out, push the collar back, attach your hose, and then you have this valve here. So with that valve open, you can undo that quick collar. With that valve, sorry, that valve closed, you can't undo that collar. With it opened up, you cannot. So it's just kind of an added safety. Right, once you got that all hooked up, you can turn that stove up to high, hit it with the lighter, and she fires right up. Once you're done, just turning it back to off, letting it cool down. Closing off that flow of propane, undo that quick connect, stick our dust cap back in there. And then I just like to attach the hose to itself just to ensure that nothing's getting inside of there. Then if you just tuck it in with that quick connect in the back and looping that hose around, you can just store it right in there. And we'll close her down. latch right in the back here so if you got the dog with it you can tie him down in the back of the unit you get your spare tire straight up from there you'll find a pre-wired mount for a rear view or observation camera and down from there you get your cable and satellite inlet right here coax cable plug into there fire up at your tv location underneath it's your city water inlet water hose will plug into there turn on the water and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit and then right beside that's your exterior shower so you'll get a key just like this guy here stick it on into there and open her up You get the three foot hose with the standard head, hot and cold water, simple as that. Once you're done, just wrapping that hose around the handles, tucking it away. Now we'll make our way inside of the unit. So your assist handle just up at 90 degrees and it'll fall into place and we can open up the door. For the steps, you're going to have the door wide open, pull that slider in towards the center, pull the steps on out. These two latches there, if you to pull them out, you can extend or retract your legs to place in your cap that it needs. As we come inside, first things first, right on the left there, you get your fire extinguisher, that's standard, pull the pin point and shoot. Kind of up the wall from there, you get your light switches, the one on the right here does your interior light, your entry light, the one on the left there will do your awning light outside. Awning itself is on this switch here, press and hold extend and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, we're going to see a little black flap come down as well as the black metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to stop. If you continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. Anyways, what you're going to do is grab either arm front or rear, you just pull that down. Then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head, allowing water to then run off. I like that angle better because it does give you more shade. You can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure these arms are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. Then we'll press and hold the track, the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just going to watch to make sure these grab are super top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in. Again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Side down, you get your slide out switch, press and hold out, and the slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, we're going to hear some clicks from the motors, just letting us know they've reached their stall. Once you hear those, we'll let go of the button. Straight down from there, you get the little storage compartments here. Underneath that is access to your water pump. So if you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, those two screws there give you access to the pump. Beside that's your LP detector. Propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. This guy detects and it starts going off just like a smoke detector would. For the front door here, your travel latch is just over on the right side. And into the bedroom, your light's just on its own switch there. Lines throughout the unit, just sit where you leave them. Then you get your closet space all around. 
If you pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to a storage to your front storage compartment. And then over on this wall here, you get your TV backer there, power outlet, cable and satellite outlet. Straight up above us, you are pre-wired for Wi-Fi. And just your closet space over here as well. Emergency exit bias here, you're taking this red tab, pull on that to get rid of the screen, take the handle here, throw it outside, pop on out. Right around the corner from there, you get your thermostat. So temp selection is right across the top there. Bottom left here, if you go to the right side, you get heat. At that point, really, you don't have fan control, you're just leaving it on. So once that furnace fires up, it'll be moving its air through all of our floor registers. If you're looking to just move some air around, you're gonna have this slider here come center left and that'll turn on the fan. At that point, you can select your high or low fan. Otherwise, really, you just wanna leave that in auto. After fan, you can come into cool. Again, just select your temperature. With your air conditioner going, you've got two different options here. You got these two louvers there. You can have those closed, in which case you'll be using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air. Or you can open them up and it'll dump all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want those open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, and close them off to start moving the air throughout. Once you're done, just sliding it to off. The lights throughout the unit are just on their own little center push buttons there. Is up in the slide here. So this couch does fold out, taking the two bottom cushions. Sorry, just picking them up and it folds down. Folds back up. The cup holders there do have little lights on them as well as USB outlets. And your dinettes here. That side push button. You take your dinette tabletop and just wiggle that up and out of its legs. The legs will then wiggle out of their bases. The table will sit onto these three ledges here. Take your back cushions, fill on the table to create a bed. Right above our heads is your smoke detector. Into the kitchen, your storage up top here, you'll find that binder. That binder's got all of your owner's manuals, any remotes, anything like that for the unit, you'll find right in there. Above the sink is a little light here, hot and cold water, of course, you get the mobile head and the folding sink cover. The drawer space beside it. As well as the storage underneath it. Again, if you're looking to winterize the unit yourself, hot water tanks just right back there. You do have the bypass valves on it already, of course. Microwave up top, pretty standard, just like home. Down underneath it, you get your range vent, your light, as well as your fan. This is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up to evacuate any fumes from our stove. For the stove, the bifold cover just flips on back. Take the knobs here, press them in, it automatically ignites. Once you're done, just sliding them all off, letting it cool down, and then closing it back down. For the oven, we're gonna pop it open. We're gonna press that oven there, and that'll turn on the light. Then you're gonna press that knob in, turn it over to that little pilot light. And once that pilot light gets going, it can let go. And then you're just gonna select your temperature here. We'll go with 290 for now, and then it'll fire up. You'll hear a little click, and then it'll fire up. Okay, there we go. Once you're done, you just turn this guy off, press oven again, turn off the light, and that'll turn it all off. Once it cools down completely, this light will go out. Until that light goes out, if you were to select your temperature, it would just fire right back up again. Drawer space underneath it, 12 volt fridge here, freezer up top, fridge down below. It is fully 12 volts, so as long as your batteries are charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Underneath it's just the return air for your furnace. You just kind of want to make sure it's not blocked off. Entertainment area here, so you got your CV. Everything runs down and through to your connections down here. So you get your power outlet here. There's a 12 volt outlet back here as well. You also have your antenna. Turning that antenna on, just a little black kind of button there. It turns on that green light. Storage space all around it. As well as your stereo here, it's pretty straightforward there. Power button turns it on. I believe power button's also mute, so just press and hold to turn it off. Zone one's your inside set, zone two's your outside set. Into the bunk space, you can see you get the, the window back there as well as the little push button light. Same thing down here, just minus the window. You do get the little power outlets up on the wall there, just USB. Power converter here, if you press the top and center, it'll pop on open. All of your breakers in the middle here, whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. On the right side, we get all of our fuses. Whenever a fuse pops, you get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. And then into the bathroom, your light switch is over on the wall here. 
it just turns on the one light this light here center push button again up above that you get your monitor panels water pump switch there turns on your water pump drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines battery so you can see we're currently c for charging g is good f is fair l is low your fresh tank as you fill that up we'll go to a third two thirds and full same idea for your black your gray one and your gray two gray one i believe is going to be your bathroom gray two is going to be your kitchen in the shower you get standard head and hose hot and cold water of course right up above that you get your roof vent just turn that knob to open it up switch in the back corner turns on the fan toilet flips on open you get your flusher front and center right around the back of the sink here you get your gfr protected outlet test on top reset in the center storage underneath the sink just being mindful of your drains and your water lines hot and cold water at the sink of course and your medicine cabinets here and lastly just your hot water tank controls real quick so on the right side there you get the little flame letting you know it's firing up with propane and then on the left side is a little thunderbolt it's just firing up with electricity if this red light here were to fire up it's just letting you know it hasn't turned on so at that point just off back on to reset it so I do believe that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.